Remember, if you do enjoy this video to hit that like button because if this video gets 10,000 likes then I'll walk up to a random kid at the park and tell him that I'm him from the future. Then I'll just disappear into the shrubs and let that shit fester in his brain for the rest of his life. <laughs> oh yeah. Now go ahead and dip your butt cheeks in a bowl of Count Chocula and let's get to average bait, baby! At number 10, we've got Solitude Jail has a fake wall. Now going to jail is definitely a bummer. I mean, there's the cold cell bars slamming shut behind you. That weird serial rapist that licks his lips every time you blink a little too long. There's that communal toilet that's always wet for some reason. And then there's the realization that maybe four beers is your limit from now on. I mean, going to jail just sucks, and in Skyrim it's no different. You lose all your shit and you get locked in a jail cell for a given duration of time. Now, although it does make the world seem more real, having the added immersion of consequences for your actions, it can be a bummer sitting in a jail cell in a fucking video game. But don't worry, because Skyrim doesn't just let you go to jail. No, no. If you go to jail in the right place, then you can actually break out. Which is, awkwardly, a lot of fun. Makes me feel good, but also dirty, if that makes any sense. But don't worry, you're not gonna have to make friends with Morgan Freeman and tunnel your way out of Shawshank with a fucking rock hammer. Oh, Betsy, no. In fact, if you go to jail in solitude, the jail cell that you're transported to after being caught by the guards actually has a fake wall, which you can knock down. And if you do knock it down, you can just meander on out of there like, uh, fucking nothing happened. It's one of the most efficient prison escapes ever. It's not even a hard wall to knock down. And there's like a notification when you stand in front of it. Do you want to knock down this wall? I most certainly do. Thank you very much. Similarly, if you get locked up in Whiterun, there's a grate leading to a sewer escape, which is pretty cool. Which makes escaping from both Solitude and Whiterun a real option, rather than serving the sentence like a law-abiding citizen. Furthermore, if you're arrested in Winterhold, you're actually taken to a cave rather than a jail cell. Which is a fun fact that I just felt like I needed to tell you guys about. Oh, also, if you get arrested more than once in Solitude, do note that the fake wall will not be an option the second time, because they fortify the shit out of it. Yeah, those guards, they're not going to be made a fool of a second time, alright? So use your Solitude Get Out of Jail Free card wisely the first time around. I rate this detail one gym teacher that's terrible at demonstrations. Hey, Mr. Porter, are you okay, man? Yes, Billy, I'm fucking super. Can you go get the nurse, please? At number nine, we've got the Headless Horseman. Now, do you guys remember the legend of Sleepy Hollow? You know, the story about Ichabod Crane and his hapless attempt to win the heart and hand of Katrina Van Tassel by proving he's not a pussy fart and going into the woods with a known poltergeist? Firstly, Ichabog is like the weirdest fucking name I ever heard of, right? <laughs> Definitely not a leading man. Anyways, poor old Ichabod thought he could just go gallivanting through the woods like a boss and spoiler alert, a headless horseman fucks up his whole world. However, I am enthusiastic about the fact that Skyrim creators and designers have thrown in an awesome homage and tribute to the famed author William Irving and his most notable work, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. However, my boy Ichabog, or Icky Shit for short, is still nowhere to be seen. Rather, this easter egg pays homage to the Headless Horseman himself, who scares the bejesus out of poor old Ichabog before he assaulted him with a flaming pumpkin head. This spectral equestrian can be found during the daytime near Hamver's Rest a cemetery located near Dustman's Cairn between Whiterun and Yalmarch. However, at night, the ghost of this fallen warrior roams all over the world of Skyrim. Though his presence is ominous and fear-inflicting, this specter isn't likely to actually cause you any harm. You cannot hurt him by any means, and he will likely allow you only a mere glimpse of his eerie presence before he rides off into the night. He may even shout at you, saying, You're not welcome here, or who dares disturb my rest? But for the most part, he's just an awesome ghost to watch and follow, especially if you're a fan of the literature. I rate this detail one kid falling face first into a cat's asshole. Oh no. Oh, Whiskers, this, this is gonna scare me for life. At number eight, we've got the shadow marks of the Thieves Guild. Now, science, they teach us all sorts of valuable lessons in life. Like, not to lick that electrical fence because it will electrocute your fucking face. Or don't feed the animals at the zoo because they have the animals on a strict no cheese puff diet. Or don't put that lotion on your balls because it's gonna burn your balls. A lesson I learned all too late, I'm afraid. All too late. 
Needless to say, signs or markings can be useful in the real world, but they can also be very useful in fantasy as well. Skyrim is such a big place that you can travel through the world space a thousand times and not discover all the little secrets it has to offer. But don't worry because you may not have known this, but the Thieves Guild leaves helpful markings all throughout the world space to help guide you and show you some of the secrets. Now that's a real swollen penis of information right there. I bet you didn't know about that, did ya? I know I didn't, my mind was totally fucking blown when I found out about this little gem. Now for frequent Skyrim gamers, strange markings on the side of a building or beside an entryway while running around Skyrim can be noticed. It was actually no coincidence that those markings are apt to be shadow marks left behind by the members of the Thieves Guild, and each marking means something distinct and different. For instance, if you are unfortunate enough to be arrested, you may find a marking of a circle with a downward pointing triangle. This indicates a point of escape from your jail cell. However, a large downward pointing triangle overlaying a small circle indicates danger or threats to the members of the guild lie nearby. Now, if this sounds a bit confusing, there's actually a guide to the markings and their meanings can be found at the red flagging near the guild headquarters. Now, whoever said there was no honor among thieves? I mean, these markings can save your loot or they can even save your life. I read this detail, one lady with a sprinkler coming right out of her asshole. Oh shit! Oh god! God damn it! Someone for fuck's sake, shut off the water! At number 7, we've got Summon a Dragon in Blackreach. Now, I've always wanted to summon a dragon, right? I mean, more specifically, I wanted to summon a luck dragon named Falcor to help me fight off the nothing, like that shy bastard Bastion in the never-ending story. But honestly, this is the next best thing. Skyrim actually lets you summon a dragon like a badass, but instead of a helpful dragon like Falcor, this dragon is angry. I mean, this is an angry dragon that may or may not have a serious drinking problem that makes it more violent. So it's not a friendly dragon that will hold your hand and whistle Dixie as you fucking gallivant through the woods. No, it's not, okay? It's not a friendly dragon, but it is still really cool that you can actually summon a dragon in Skyrim to do battle with that isn't actually in the game unless it's summoned. I mean, as if Blackreach wasn't awesome enough, it's actually home to an Elder Dragon. The dragon's name is actually Volathril, you know? Good old Volathril. And it can be summoned by using the Unrelenting Force Shout on the large yellow-orange ball above the Blackreach Debate Hall. It's level 50 and it's very powerful for those of you who are low-leveled. So do note that if you summon this bad boy prematurely, it will slap your penis all over Blackreach, but like in a bad way. Not good slaps, very bad, violent, level 50 dragon slaps, okay? So fucking, you know, only only summon this guy if you can, if you feel like you can beat his ass, all right? If you do decide not to attack and just run away, he'll start attacking all the nearby creatures. Which is pretty cool. He's just angry. He's an angry fucking dragon. He's got a drinking problem. He wasn't held enough as a baby. He's violent, okay? He wants to hurt people. Now, do remember that you can only summon this dragon once, so make sure that you're ready when you do. I rate this detail. One guy who thought he'd go under the hurdles rather than over them like a genius, and it ended terribly. Ah, my fucking face! At number six, we've got Infinite Arrows. Did you ever think to yourself, boy, oh boy, would I like to have some more fucking arrows, but you look in your inventory only to find a ball of lint and some linty balls. And you think, why the fuck do I carry around those linty balls with me everywhere I go? It's starting to get weird. Well, you're in luck because you may not know this, but if you have some patience, there's a way to get infinite arrows in Skyrim. Now, for most archers in Skyrim, it isn't hard to have a consistently full stock of arrows. By looting corpses, digging through found chests, and even searching the freshly killed bodies of animals you killed on the road, you can find a wealth of arrows to keep in your inventory. Plus, they have no weight, so you can carry as many as you can find without being encumbered. That is, until you run out of arrows. And then you'll be all like, fuck my life, fam, what do I do now? I need arrows, and I fucking need them now. Know that if that happens to you, you're going to be able to nip that problem in the butt just by visiting Solitude's training area, specifically where the guards practice archery. After each shot a guard makes, collect the arrow from his target. It actually can be really fun to say mine now after you grab one of the arrows. It's incredibly satisfying. It's mine now. It's mine now. See, doesn't that feel awkwardly sexual? 
Now, if you just do this, you'll collect a massive amount of steel arrows for free. Yeah, that's right. And they'll just keep firing them off, so technically you can do it forever if you're looking for a way to die unfulfilled in life. Now, for higher quality arrows, you'll need to have one of your preferred type in your inventory. Enter sneak mode, ensure that you're not being watched, and then pickpocket the guard shooting at the target. Take all of his steel arrows and then plant an arrow of your choice in his inventory. Only one is necessary. After that, he'll shoot an unlimited number of your favorite arrow, and you can just take them one after another from the target. I rate this detail one guy riding a horse completely wrong. Okay, kitty up, buttercup. Let's go. Come on. I think this horse is fucking broken. At number five, we've got Winnie the Pooh in Skyrim. Do you guys remember that rambunctious Pooh Bear that was always getting himself into all sorts of sticky situations? Whether it was trying to get honey from a nest of angry bees and getting stung in the eyeballs a precarious amount of times, or disguising himself as a cloud, or maybe getting stuck in Rabbit's doorway because he ate too much and his food baby was too big to fit in a tiny rabbit-sized doorway. Or maybe you remember his friends, that depressing as fuck gloomy gray donkey named Eeyore, or that frisky tiger who has an alarming amount of self-esteem issues. You're a fucking tiger, bro. Okay, scaring the tits off of an antelope drinking at the water hole. That's what tigers do best, okay? Get your fucking life together. Or maybe you remember that timid little piglet who sounds like a pedophile. Well, if you don't, then I'm here to remind you about Winnie the Pooh Bear and the legend that he was. Also, you might be wondering, what the fuck does Winnie the Pooh have to do with Skyrim, right? Well, wouldn't you know it, Jim Cummings, the voice actor who voiced Pooh Bear, aka Winnie the Bitch, voices a lot of the characters in Skyrim. That's right, he voiced Scald the Elder, Vignar Greymane, Alfred Battleborn, and many more. If you've interacted with anyone in Skyrim, there's probably a chance that that person was voiced by Jim Cummings. Because he's voice acted up a storm in this bitch. Jim does a great job on the different characters he plays, making each one feel and sound a bit different. We're two of the city's oldest and most respected clans. But we could trace our histories all the way back. This is just one of those details you wouldn't know about unless someone on the internet told you about it. So you're welcome. I rate this detail one guy diving headfirst into a campfire. Mistakes were made! Mistakes were most definitely made! At number four, we've got the movie reference from 300. Now, if you haven't seen the movie 300, it's about 300 overly aggressive underdressed soldiers picking a fight with a really tall tyrant that glitters his balls. So you know he's a fucking psycho. After watching that movie, I knew that if I ever wanted to be a tyrant myself, I would at least have to powder my balls. All right, enough about me and my glittery tyrant balls. Do you all remember that scene in 300 where a way too young Leonidas goes up against a frisky wolf? in the icy tundra of Greece's colder climes. Now the wolf thinks he's got Leonidas cornered, only to get bamboozled by a tiny funnel-shaped crevice. Then Leonidas, in nothing but a pair of tidy whities stabs the big scary but now fully discombobulated wolf in the fucking face with a homemade spear. Yeah, that scene. Yeah. Well, if you travel south of the Shrine Imperiite in the Reach, you'll come across a human skeleton lying near the remains of a sabery cat trapped between two rocks. The poor thing has a glass sword stuck in its mouth. Which isn't totally accurate because Leonidas had like a really big toothpick and not a fancy glass sword. But the reference is still blatantly obvious. I guess in Skyrim's version though, Leonidas just fucking died like a second later. Which is kind of a bummer for him, right? That or he lived his whole life and then when he knew it was coming to an end, he wandered back to the same place that he stabbed the wolf in the face and died right next to his old foe like a real sport. Either way, why the fuck is that skeleton there if he got the upper hand on the big cat? Also... How did the cat stay wedged like that, and why is the person decomposed, but not the cat? I have so many questions right now. Either way, this is a really cool detail that a lot of Skyrim players might have missed. I rate this detail one police officer who's had it up to uh, here with jaywalking chickens. I don't care about your motive, Mr. Chicken. I recommend you fucking lawyer up, because I got you on multiple offenses, okay? At number three, we've got Mario as Parthenax. What if I told you that Parthenax was a short, pudgy Italian plumber who resides in Mushroom Kingdom and likes to scissor kick turtles in the fucking brain? Okay, at this point, you're probably wondering what the fuck I'm talking about. Some of you probably think I've gone fucking insane because clearly Parthenax is not an Italian plumber. He doesn't even have a fucking mustache, right? Well, not exactly. The voice actor who voiced Super Mario in the 1990s, Charles Martinet, is the same person who stars as Parthenax in Skyrim. Now, to be a fly on the wall of that edition, wow, that would be a sight to behold. I can see it already. It's-a me, a Parthenax! 
Yeah, that was that was really something there, Charles. But uh, can we try something maybe a little different with the next one? Maybe try some range? <laughs> you think? It's a me, a Parthenax. Oh, God. Now, Charles did an amazing job on Parthenax, and he is by far one of the most memorable characters in Skyrim. He's just a super chill, old-as-fuck dragon who will do just about anything for the protagonist. He's the leader of the Greybeards, even though he clearly doesn't have a beard, and he plays a pivotal role in the main quest of the Dragonborn. Word as it fills your inner self. Will I teach you, Dovahkiin? What word? Now, because Charles is such an amazing voice actor, there's a good chance that nobody would have known about this if it wasn't for the internet. So there you go. That's a wicked detail. You're welcome. I rate this detail one monkey that doesn't believe in foreplay. And number two, we've got pickpocket somebody's heart. Now, I think it's safe to say if someone bamboozled me and ran off with my heart, I'd be more than just a little upset. I'd be downright dead as fuck. All right? You, Cause you can't live without your heart. I know this, okay? I've been to grade three. I know what you guys are thinking. How do you steal somebody's heart, right? Well, just ask Isabella, that sexy sphinx. You broke my heart! I'm not gonna lie to you guys. When she left me, I cried so hard I pooped a little. But obviously broken hearts is not what we're talking about here. We're not talking about stealing someone's heart metaphorically here, okay? But stealing someone's heart literally, which is pretty fucked up. You know those Forsworn Briarheart dudes who rock the fucking deer hat? Yeah, well it turns out that they became briar hearts by having their own hearts removed and replaced by a tree cone or a briar heart. Not a fair swamp if you ask me, and I find it hard to believe that there's a lot of people volunteering for that kind of cosmetic surgery. Anyways, this makes the Forsworn briar hearts particularly easy to kill. All you have to do is just sneak up behind one of them and pickpocket their hearts. Yoink! They will collapse like a person who just lost their heart and be dead as fuck. And as a nasty little byproduct? They'll never be able to find true love. But you, on the other hand, will have a gooey heart in your inventory that's sure to scare the fuck out of potential Valentines this year. Happy Valentines! This is Max girlfriend's heart. She's dead now. Hey, where are you going? Hey! Are you single? I read this detail one panda reminding everyone why it's an endangered species. And at number one, there's no dragons in Skyrim. I bet you guys thought that was a dragon, didn't you? Sure did. Looks like a dragon to me. What if I told you that that wasn't actually a dragon? I would probably be completely devastated, most likely. Well, those dragons actually aren't dragons. They're wyverns. What are wyverns, you might be wondering, in your squishy think organ right now? Well, they're the two-legged cousin of the four-legged dragon. That makes the main character a wyvernborn and possibly a fucking liar. I get it, though. You tell people you're a dragonborn and people get a little boner. You tell people you're a wyvernborn and they're like, oh, God, that's awful. Sounds disgusting. Is that an STD? Does it come out on your mouth? What is that all about? How did you get that? What did you touch with your mouth to get that? That sounds awful. Now, I'm not sure what possessed the developers at Bethesda to base an entire game on a mistaken understanding of a long-term fantasy lore. But I can tell you this, they're fucking savage as fuck. They do what they want. Up until I did research on the internet, I didn't know the difference. Okay, they could have given the fucking dragons three legs and two dicks. I still would have thought they were dragons. They all look like fucking dragons to me, okay? You know, it's a weird dragon. It's a weird fucking dragon, but it's a dragon nonetheless, you know? Then the internet told me that's not a dragon, so I was like, all right, fuck it, I'll go with it. And again, maybe the dragons of Skyrim just have a heavy wyvern s feel to them, right? Wyvern or dragon, who cares? They're just a giant fictitious reptile, right? Potato, tomato, potato, manato. Who gives a fuck, right? They're all still big bad motherfuckers. One leg, seven legs, two dicks, one eyeball. Who cares? I can honestly say I wouldn't kick them in the sack, regardless of their origin story, because they'd still bite your fucking head off. Either way, it's a really cool detail that I'm sure not a lot of people knew about Skyrim. I rate this detail three cats trying to become a helicopter. Okay, everyone move to the right really fast, and we should achieve lift. No, your other right, Kyle, you fuck! Thanks again for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to bitch slap that subscribe button like it's three weeks behind on your rent. <laughs> bitch! Where's the money, bitch? Where's the money? Where is it? Also, go ahead and hit that bell icon, too, because apparently YouTube thought there should be extra steps. Why not, right? I'd like to subscribe, but first I have to click this and this and do this. Oh, it needs an email. All right, and this. Okay, fuck. Just tell me when he's uploading. Fuck! Once you do all that, if you're lucky, at the stroke of midnight, a tiny little average baiter's fairy might come and tickle your butthole.
Now, I hope to see you all again next time, and remember to keep on average baiting, baby.